through this podcast what i want to just sort of get the word out is that hey please if you are looking to start up in education please start a college this is a long drawn game this is a pe game rather than a vc game for a short period of time during the pandemic edtech became a vc game but that doesn't mean that that to be there permanently education has very similar economics as tax work towards growing your revenue and not necessarily cutting your costs that's what led me to education and then realized uh, there's a huge market gap hi pratham welcome to the third episode of the record club show uh the idea in this particular podcast is to basically discuss uh, as to how does a founder live okay. and what are the basic intentions and uh, priorities that a founder has okay uh, now that we both depend uh, or we both are from the higher education industry so of course the conversation is going to be about higher education uh not a very formal conversation uh let's But keep it started very formal <laughs> let's keep it light i'm just warming up let's put it that way <laughs> uh so uh, i'll i'll start with the first question okay. and then then we can take it up from okay there. sounds good let's do i'm that. i'm very curious pratham uh you you've grown up in an education industry environment mm-hmm. and uh, even after growing up you chose to join this particular industry i've seen a lot of kids while they're growing up uh, they are they are okay with what their parents do and then choose not to take that particular career uh, but it was different for you yeah. may i so i think slightly different right so my my parents run a educational institution right a university and it's the oldest business in the book you know yeah. right education like <laughs> not at tech is genuine like brick and mortar education um so when i started my career i in fact ended up uh, starting up in software so i ran a saas company for the first 10 years of my professional life in the us it was started as a project that i was given in a class that project wow. became a product the product became a company and this class was actually with uh, was with adam grant i don't know if you follow him yeah i'm sure many people follow him so he was a professor and the way he used to teach was no exams no lectures no slides no grades no attendance none of that he would just give you one small project in each class and oh. in groups of 2 3 4 whatever we want to do we would work on that project and generally the, there will be a external stakeholder like some local restaurant or some local food truck or some local small business right and we would work with them come up with a solution and then just give it to them that was it oh kehne ko to it was a organizational behavior class but there was no organizational behavior that we were studying we were so actually how, living it so how was it it was a set of people in a, in a group that were given a set of projects and you used to go I'll, out and I'll do it the one that we were given right so there was a local newspaper called philadelphia inquirer okay. founded by benjamin franklin old newspaper right okay. but never grew and they wanted um, to build a system whereby they can post articles um quizzes calculators assessments graders very quickly on their website okay very simple at that time this is 2010 they had to code everything they had a team in i think bulgaria or somewhere they would have to send it to them in the morning <laughs> and the time by the time they would get that article back wo late ho chuka hoga matlab like the story is already old right so they essentially wanted a cms okay <laughs> like an enterprise grade wordpress hmm to humne unke liye bana diya we took an instance of wordpress we improved on it a little bit added like a security layer and a you know like a login layer etc permissions and we gave it to them and said this is great uh, you know why don't you charge us for it so we charged them for it gave them a few more features so that that project became a full product then oh. we next went to new york times went to wall street journal went to boston uh, boston chronicle uh, boston globe san francisco chronicle chicago tribune all of this so currently we have almost 4000 um, publishers who use our platform right Is still live? Yeah, it's still live. You can oh, wow. pretty much use it. Of course, as I don't run it anymore, my business partner does, who's still in the US. Um, but I wanted to move back to India, and when I moved back to India, I wanted to do another business, a different business. So that's how it began. I'm going to go to that. And uh, you know, education seemed like the obvious thing because I realized that education has very similar economics as SAS. See, Almost. you know it's it's uh, i mean at least i don't know about edtech i've never been exposed to that but at least education uh, so in saas you know you work at a 40 50 60% margin similar in education um you work towards growing your revenue and not necessarily cutting your costs and i think that was the big thing in manufacturing and other kind of businesses you have to always cut your costs right. to make that margin right but in education you have to increase your top line not worry too much about your bottom line wo apna aap ho jata hai So I think that's what led me to education, and then you know realized uh, there's a huge market gap. I just want to do sort of go and fill that market gap. 
And and you started Masters Union directly. That was the idea, or you you experimented with various different ideas in between, and then jumped no, onto no, no. the idea. No, no, no. So we spent good two three months just thinking of what we will build. Okay. So we went very clinically. We said, okay, let's look at the market. Let's look at the biggest gaps in the market. Let's go to the depth in those market gaps, and let's try to build a product that specifically solves for the deepest market gap. Right. Oh. And that turned out to be undergrad business schools. But I've been quite curious. Why why business schools? So, if you look at any university, hmm. from Harvard to an LPU uh, or an IIT, you would always find that the business schools are the largest profit centers, not okay. the engineering schools, not the law schools, not the design schools, not the medical schools. It's always going to be the business school. The reason for that is the least amount of capex is required to build a business school. Number one. Number two, you can upsell, cross-sell uh, all these evening courses, weekend courses, executive education courses, which you otherwise cannot. Right. And generally, the paying capacity for a BBA MBA is going to be a lot more than a BTech, BSc, BA, right? And so, for that reason, across US, India, China, you would always find that the profit centers for any university is always a business school. Number one. Number two, it's easiest to build a brand with business school because in one year MBA, you can showcase some outcomes and results. Yeah, students can pass out and then can join the industry and industry so on. And then that 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 flywheel effect can come in sooner. Right. right? So, like for when, when Ashoka University started, um, you know they also started with one-year program called right. YIF. Yeah. Right. If you remember. Yeah. Uh, you know, 2014. To, earlier than that, I think it was yeah. 11. Acha. 2014, they actually started the campus, with the oh, undergrad program. Okay. But before that, they were running the YIF to you know get that flywheel running. A lot of universities start like that. So that's uh, the the quick story of Masters Union. So it was a very calculated. It wasn't. Like many entrepreneurs have that story that, you know, like it was my problem, like that's <laughs> I wanted to solve it, or suddenly yeah. like one day it dawned. No, for us, it was, we did the research, figure out the, you know, gaps in the market and just... So the outcome of, of growing up in the education industry was that you knew uh, what is it that you need to go out and do? Because those data points that MBA schools do really well across the world, the idea that within one year you'll be able to show the outcome of the learning outcome that you've been giving to a student is something that you'd, you'd get with experience and the kind of people that you've I, been... Looking uh, backwards, it seems very obvious. <laughs> it doesn't seem like rocket science, to be honest. Yeah. Right? Um, you know, I don't know if it's... I think a lot of people have the insight, but people are just scared of entering the traditional education industry. For sure. Right? Like, it's just it just feels a lot more daunting because UGC and AICT and NANAC and NIRF, all these organizations feel very daunting. It's a lot more regulated, very regulated uh, system that, system. that you I think people really are find. scared about entering the market for that reason. Yeah. You know, st if you're a startup founder today, you wouldn't want to get into like <laughs> education. Traditional education. <laughs> traditional education. Yeah. So I think what we wanted to do was find a sweet spot between traditional education and ed tech. So I think Masters Union is, is, is somewhere in that like sweet spot where we're not regulated at all, yet we're a physical campus. Yeah. I mean, we can talk in more depth as and, to how we achieve that. And it's the best of both the worlds, actually. Yeah, and it's the best of both the worlds. So, um, but what's your story? How's, uh, <laughs> how's, how's Imagine? We, we met a long time ago in a random hotel in yeah. Lonavla. In a random hotel in Lonavla, and we discussed as to how a higher education will move forward. Yeah. Uh, my story is, is quite simple. You know, I started my career, I did my engineering and MBA. And my father was in the army, um, never wanted to join the army, wanted to bring out uh, or wanted to be an entrepreneur from my sixth class or the seventh class onwards. That's what my parents tell me. I don't remember any of it, actually. Um, I worked for about 10 months in Infosys, right? And I spent three months reading books. That's the best thing that I do. Uh, about two months swimming and the next five months working on about a couple of projects. One of the biggest things that I learned at Infosys was I was in this HR uh, uh, meeting and they were telling me as to what will be the scale that I'll grow at and how many years it will take. And there were like eight or nine levels between where I joined to like the, like the CEO or even the business head if I remember correctly. And each level had about two to three years that I needed to spend so that I could go and reach till there. That was like a 24 year career map that they'd gone out and uh, given us if we wanted to reach a CXO level position within Infosys. Having said that, when I had joined, uh, the COO of Infosys BPO was a gentleman called Ritesh and he was 31 years old. Uh, passed out from FMS here in Delhi and he was a brilliant chap. And one of the first questions that I went out and asked was, 
do how did he become the ceo at the age of 31 and that's when i realized that look everybody has to hack their career somehow or the other you need a shortcut either based what on what is your, he doing now um he's a he's a very famous guy he did he did after that he did media and now he's a uh, people are running after him as a consultant and so on right. so that's the story and then i jumped out of infosys uh, joined a very small startup uh, it was a technology digital based startup that was based out of the valley uh, i went out there i met the founders uh, i asked them as to how do you go for a million dollar presentation to to the companies that you're presenting to and they said we just pick up a whiteboard marker and go in and i had come in from the infosys world for where for every discussion there was a presentation or a slide that was uh, created well 18 people engineering team landed up as being called as the head of marketing and somehow every 6 months i used to change my designation to becoming director of marketing and so on and so forth my job was to do sales and then set up the whole brand in the various countries that we were setting up the organization at the company was doing very high tech engineering so at that time we were working the azure and the aws the cloud had just come out in the year 2010 11 uh, we were building some of the components out there. AR, VR was a very new technology, so nobody knew how to how to go about it. Uh, cyber security and security on the mobile devices was something very new because end-to-end -end encrypted phone calls was something which was unheard of at that particular time. And those were the problems and the products that we were working on. Uh, my job then was to, I was given $25 on a daily basis to rent a car and I was given the, the office address of an IBM and a Microsoft and a Google and so on and so forth. And my job was to just drive around, make sure I meet the right executives and tell them about the company so that we could get those set of projects. I did that for about four, four and a half years. I also helped in raising money for that particular business. So that was the first, first MBA if I put how, it How there. did all of this lead to Imagine XP? Uh, well, so it's it's a basically long story from there. I did tech, understanding that there are no skills that's coming in tech. So we had to actually train students for about six months or four months before we could get them a job at that particular company. Uh, getting out of there, we founded with, with our set of friends that you see out here, we founded a UX design organization. And that was again a, a future skill, a skill that nobody had here in India. You could only find barely 200 to 400 people who actually had heard of UX design, forget about practicing it at that particular time. Set up an agency called FCUX, did that for about three, three and a half years. Understood there as well that look, you at the age of 27 can get business if you knew a skill that a lot of people didn't know. Mm. And um, did that for about three years, sold that to, to EY and went into consulting. Now, the whole trajectory was we started with tech, went into design and then came into business consulting. And this is the time when the digital actually took off. And we realized digital is nothing but a mixture of design, tech and business. And over the period of time, uh, people were preparing me to enter the education industries because my father had spent about 17 years in the university space. He had understood UGC and so on and so forth. And he came back to me and said, look, the regulation is fine, but the industry needs something really new in terms of curriculum and faculty and content and so on and so forth. And that's when in 2018, uh, we started first with bootcamp programs, mm. but realized that bootcamp is not the solution to the lack of skill and education in the country, and then moved into education institutions, started partnering with them to make sure that they could deliver the right set of curriculum, the faculty, and but so on. focused on UX? Focused on digital, but started with UX, and then moved into things like blockchain XP? and robotic process of what, automation. What, what is XP? In XP is experience. Okay. So experience okay. of education. So imagine yeah. your experience of education is how the, the name started coming right. about. And we stuck with that name. People started remembering it and stuff. Now, uh, we've always believed that, look, you need to create a name in a particular area. Like you, you knew that management was the place. We started with UX design because we knew that there were about 10,000 jobs that were available in terms of UX design in India. We had exported IT in the but, 90s but, and the 2000s. But earlier you started off with boot camps. We started were, with boot camps. What, six months? Three months? It was three months. Three months. Yeah. So in three months, can you make someone a UX? Uh... Look, UX is a skill and it's not an education, hmm. right? Uh, there's a certain set of people that you can get them to become user experience designers. For example, a lot of fashion designers and interior designers existed in the country because those were the degrees that were available. They had the right concepts of design and foundations of design, but they hadn't applied those foundations of design in the, yeah, in the digital world. 
एंड दैट इज वेयर हम लोग आए हमने बोला नहीं यार यूजर एक्सपीरियंस बहुत अच्छा होता है पैसे भी मिलते हैं साथ में आप एसी में भी बैठ के काम कर सकते हो एंड द फैशन डिजाइनर एंड द इंटीरियर डिजाइनर रियली केम अबाउट इन साइड लुक दिस इज द नेक्स्ट सेट ऑफ मंथ्स एंड व्हाट वाज द फीस दिस वाज अबाउट 70000 रुपीस एंड 72 आवर प्रोग्राम अक्रॉस 3 मंथ्स दैट दैट that boot camp still goes on mm. uh, although we don't scale it up because we keep it as a 10 people 12 people classroom because we are not able to teach or give that so this is that, in person or this in person uh, right. still in going person. on today uh, so that's that was the business and then we realized look see boot camp has got its inherent set of issues mm. there are like for example we we serve the digital world mm. in india there are only about 5.5 million it workers and ites workers 0 uh, to sorry 22 to 30 years which is 0 to 5 years of experience is only about 33% of them so you land up with about 2 million of tam actually that That's, you can it's quite big though it, it's big big enough huh. 2 million of tam that you can target but with that the niche of ux design or the niche of niche of ai ml or a niche of blockchain or a niche of uh, robotic process automation was very small so we used to land up with about 250000 service addressable market so that's where there was a very high competition that's the reason that you But see even with two and a half lakhs i mean the largest university in the world is probably 40000 50000 students yeah so i mean, mean india will break that i'm sure you'll see that that number really grow here in india you'll mm-hmm. see universities coming out with 80000 90000 Set of no, 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 near no, no, near no, no, future have increased uh, near future huh? near future that's what i believe uh, yeah. because i believe that a lot number of institutions will shut down yeah. and there'll be a few eminent universities and institutions that will remain yeah. whoever is able to compete in this market so the numbers will obviously be huge there but that was the reason i mean 250000 service addressable market we thought with a very small uh, niche area that we are serving like the likes of ux blockchain yeah. robotic so process that's not automation that's not big enough that's so not big enough then you got into doing this for colleges we then went to the universities mm-hmm. um, uh, we were design thinking and ux experts what we did was we picked up a car from i used to live in pune at that particular time we picked up a car and traveled till chandigarh and between pune and chandigarh whatever number of colleges and institutions that you could find we stopped there met the vice chancellor addressed the students understood what their feedback about these future skills like ux design is have they heard of it so now you're doing credited courses with the university so you will teach some of the courses and the yes. university would pay you for yes. those courses correct got it got it makes sense so we are so now so the time still remains the same is just that you Uh, not directly reached out to the customer but through the university well no so your uh, cac reduces basically think of it this way a boot camp is positioned at uh, people who are working in the industry okay this is and a students. degree yeah. is positioned at a 12th students. class student yeah, yeah. so one of the biggest learning was yaar ek bachcha fees to deta hai ye university mein a large number of universities and colleges are not able to deliver that particular outcome not of their fault but because of faculty nahi hai curriculum nahi hai industry nahi hai you also take ownership of the placement then Yes of course I mean you have to prove the learning outcome that you are giving to the students So let's say at a university which is let's say 5000 people probably let's say 1000 kids are doing your course about 500 of them we have reached 10%. the maximum of 10% to 12% at 10%. each university So there's just yeah. 500 students uh, you will teach them for the 4 years or we'll teach them for 4 years 4 years yeah. Yeah. and you will charge the university per student per student per student over the 4 years Yes and that would be the same as 70000 like you come down to basically the same or more um it will be a little more based on what is the fees of that particular university and But, it's a recurring revenue yeah. that you go out and get over so now i'm just wondering like and this is interesting for me ki um is the univer- like if i'm running a university right not if i mean like i'm running a college yeah absolutely i don't want to share my revenue with anybody right right like at the end of the day you're also teaching with a professor or with a teacher or with yeah. a trainer or with yeah. some sort of a master correct I mean what's stopping me from just getting that master directly rather no, than nothing is stopping huh. you see uh, look this game is not about going after the revenue share in the business model right this game is about creating new revenue for that particular university Achha, like so the student pays over and above the fees over and above the okay, fees okay okay got it so think of it also this way that we are adding capacity to the university as well now the un- like for example take the case of masters unit mm-hmm. now masters unit is very well known for management and some of the other courses that you go out into you have a grasp of this particular topic this subject and you will go in depth and teach the student fantastically well in this area mm. but tomorrow think of starting a program in blockchain now you'll have to make all of that investment of going to do the industry partnership getting in the right set of faculties making sure that you have the right corporate coaches then well, getting that for my accreditation and either for my ranking and either anyways for all of those things no but then you need that 
at the at the most hygiene first principle thought process you need that to teach the students yeah. right and now a blockchain mein asli aur acha curriculum kya hai aaj ke din mein market mein wo kisi ko nahi pata and the same case for user experience design same case for robotic process automation hmm. so what we do is we become an interface between the industry and the so are those and the university students how many end up getting placed through you so 85% people get a ppo So okay. one of the biggest records that we have is we focus rather than on placements on internship. See, our our funda is very simple. Placement is an outcome of the learn of the learning that the student does across the three to four years, right? It's the result of the work that you do, and it's like Sachin Tendulkar goes to the cricket match. We see only the international cricket match and say, "Arey, बहुत अच्छा खेलता है. ये तो बड़े आसानी से क्रिकेट खेल सकता है. ऐसा नहीं होता. Placement is is actually done on the nets. Hmm. You have to practice it. You have to learn it. You have to do projects and so on. So, we focus on the first year, second year, mein live project. Karne ke liye. Third year, mein internship. Karne ke liye. And because of the live project and internship, the children get PPO. So, all those 500, 500 will do internship. All of them will do live project. All of them will do live project. All of them will do, live project, all of them will do internships. Live project, all of them will do internships. And then from the internships, about 85% go on and get a PPO. The other 15% is, is where we have to go out and work hard for them. Got so it. that's and, and so without you that college would have done how much let's say so without us first those degree programs would not have existed at some of those universities mm. they may not have the capability or the know how to tie up with those particular niche areas that we are serving in mm. and those universities may be very good in in sciences in in general economics if they are if they are running it and so on and so forth and they have that specialty field But they may not be good in some of those future skill areas where we step in and say, look, we will be able to so help you and give you a degree. Tum de do. Aap degree do, aap infrastructure do, aap basic foundational padhai karva. Admission you do or they do? Uh, so traditionally, it's the university that has been doing admissions, and we have set up as we have been set up as an academic organization. But lately, we have started doing admissions as well. Uh, might as well. Might as well. Might as well. Thoda jada paisa le le. So mm. that was the basic thought process. Makes sense. No, super interesting. I think like. you know the two worlds are colliding essentially you know like the the university is not it has has certain privileges which is that of real estate the the degree and then but they can't teach well they can't place well and this is where you come in and you say okay i have a i have uh, a slightly different thought process there look uh, india is is jumping the guns in most of the things that they are adopting aap 2g dekho 2g se 3g 3g se 4g 5g bahut jaldi jaldi hum log kar liye baki countries itna jaldi telecom mein nahi kar paye because they were the first ones to go about doing it fortunately or fortunately unfortunately in india about 80% of the universities are 20 years and younger hmm. now because they oh, are, that, that's true yeah that's true about like for private huh? for I mean, in public also, central universities is a new concept because uh, the numbers. Sixteen of them, huh? But, uh, so but yeah, I get your point. I get so your point. Huh? Because because the institution itself is young. Mm. Uh, there's a lot of processes, techniques, know-hows, methods that's required at the university so that they can then start becoming the Harvards and the Stanfords or the Whartons of the world, right? Our job is to basically go out and shorten that path. Mm. We are helping them to create that interface with the industry where they have not been able to pay attention because they, being younger, have just been. Uh, What's pushed. your largest university partner? Uh, so we we are now 500 plus at about three universities. Okay. Uh, we are 500 about 500 plus students. 500 plus students at three universities. Uh, we we are about 150 plus at seven universities. So between these nine universities, we are at about 1,500 to 2,000 students, and then then we have 50 to 100 in some of the new ones that we started. Got. We take about two to three years to basically establish. Hmm. Um, so one of the things that I want to tell everybody in the in the ed tech space also is that this is a long drawn game. Um, this yeah. is this is a PE game rather than a VC game. Hmm. Uh, and for a short period of time during the pandemic edtech became a vc game but that doesn't mean that that's there to uh, that's to be there permanently yeah. so it's you will have to wait for it do teen saal acche se result dikhana padta hai ek bacche ko degree attain karne mein char saal teen saal lagta hai tab wo placement karta hai tab uska learning outcome dikhta mm-hmm. hai aur uske baad fir wo influence karta hai dusre bacche ko placement karne mein to hamare dhande mein is like a long drawn game that we are here oh, at okay. and moving forward to make yeah, sure the education branding can't be accelerated it cannot and if it is it will get diluted yeah i mean so uh, i mean that's a that's a great conversation to to talk about masters union now mm-hmm. uh, i you've done an exceptionally good work of branding masters union of proving the kind of learning outcome that you're going out and giving to the students 
In fact, um, I've seen some of the, I follow some of the students of, who post social or yeah. on social media, or there's a, a drop shipping company that they go out and yeah. set up in the first semester and they talk about it on, on yeah. social media and so on. How has that experience been and how do you strategically think about going out and branding an education institution? Is there, is there a set of principles that you've created for yourself? Three principles. Okay. Uh, first one is do not use performance marketing. Okay. The more you do performance marketing, the less your brand will be valued. Don't do Google and don't do LinkedIn and don't do don't put LinkedIn, money there. LinkedIn, I mean, yeah. So don't put inorganic money there. Okay. Invest a lot in content. Yeah. Right. So we will come to that. But first is, don't behave like a traditional ad tech where you're just doing sales and where you're just doing uh, performance marketing. Right? Okay. So that formula does not work. It will work for six months. It'll break after six months for sure. Right. There is no way. Uh, second is invest a lot in content. So if you come to Masters, you, know, you will find some six, seven studios. Each wow. classroom is its own studio. Everything is recorded. Right? Whether it's a class, whether it's a workshop, whether it's a dropshipping fair, whether it's which is happening this weekend, by the way, whether it's a, uh, you know, uh, we just had, just yesterday, we had the founders of Cars24 come in to teach a course. And at the end, they were taking uh, ideas from students. And that was a final exam where the students are pitching campaigns to Cars24 founders. Wow. And so one of the winners will basically get either a PPO or whatever, PPI, uh, or they will get a, uh, they'll basically be given 10 crores to invest in that idea. Wow. Go ahead. I mean, for Cars24, right? At the end of the day, so you basically become an agency for right. Cars24. Uh, and what we did was we created a live reality show around it, much like Shark Tank. Right. The students are pitching and, you know, we did this last year also with Aman and yeah. Tanmay, where they came to campus, taught their course in branding, and then students pitched ideas for both streamers. To, you know, to Aman and then Aman said, okay, idea, I like idea, I like whatever. And then, so the second is just record everything, create a lot of content, post a lot on YouTube, post a lot on Instagram. Uh, just always be with a camera, talk to students, ask them what the day was like. Right? Uh, like today you're talking about drop shipping. Today there were students who were selling crockery in the campus. Wow. Right? So we just went and we just <laughs> took a video, by the way, it's on YouTube right now, where we're just asking them, hey, listen, like how many, like did you sell today? What was your sales like today? Again, that builds. So when you're doing so much content, that automatically would lead to branding. Okay. Right. You're communicating what's happening in the classroom. You're communicating what's happening on campus, and that, if it's a good curriculum, automatically will inspire other people to think highly of the brand, to want to apply to masters. Even. And the final thing is that scarcity trumps everything when it comes to branding. Like Louis Vuitton is Louis Vuitton because of scarcity, right? Or right. whatever. Protect Philippe is protect Philippe because of scarcity. So, in masters union. Um, you have to pay 5,000 rupees to even apply. Okay. Much like you have to do for yeah. JE or NEET or... Yeah. You, know, you whatever, have to fill an application form. To fill an application form. So first, we charge you 5,000 rupees to even start the application form. Right? That makes it a little bit more premium. Then we ask you for three essays, two videos, all your you know background CVs, this, that, and two... Um, and, and the essays are also interesting. Like one of the topics in the essay this year is, um, why does my table creak? Why does my table creak? Huh. No, it wow. means nothing. Quite interesting. <laughs> There's another one, which is the second option is, uh, why is pie so easy? No meaning is This will stump 90% of the students. Right. With the 10% who understand what I'm trying to do. <laughs> other ones, yeah. you know that. So, make it really hard, the application form. So, we only get 2400 applications. That's and you okay. choose how many out of we that? We chose 200. Oh, wow. Right? Right now we have, so we, we choose around 240, we make 240 offers, 200 actually end up joining. Okay. 40 go to yeah. maybe let's say an ISB or yeah. IM or whatever, right? So, uh, so that's essentially our funnel. So when you keep things scarce, then automatically the brand will come out by itself. And on top of all of this, just to wrap it up, uh, is placements. Unless you have placements and unless those placements are audited and unless that audited report is marketed well. Right. Uh, the brand will not get built. Those I heard. You, you went out to the same organizations that do the auditing for IAM placements the as the ones who've gone out and done the... Because we knew that, see, we worked very hard on the placements. Right. And we knew that nobody's going to believe that we are actually beating IAM and the Bad or ISB. Right. Nobody's going to believe that. So in terms of salaries or in terms of the number of offers that came in? In terms of salaries, pure salary. Oh, wow. Right. That's amazing. So first year, we had around 29 lakhs, 29.12 lakhs. And at that time, ISB was around 20, and an IAM and the Bad was around 27 point something. Okay. And we said, hey, listen, this is great, <laughs> but no one's going to believe you. So and this was the first year, I first believe. Year, first oh, year. Oh, wow. <laughs> the big difference was that we were only 60 students. Okay. And ISB, I yeah, have like 500, 500, 500 yeah. students or something, right? 
बट यू आर ऑल्सो डूइंग आर फर्स्ट ईयर सो विजा वी टेल द सिक्सटी स्टूडेंट्स बट ये एवरेज सैलरी है हमारा वी हैव बेन बी सी जी मेकिन जी माइक्रोसॉफ्ट गूगल फेसबुक ये सब है तो ये भेज देते हैं बट टू फॉर पीपल टू बिलीव इट वी हैव टू गेट इट ऑडिटेड इफ यू गेट इट ऑडिटेड फ्रॉम अ पी डब्ल्यू सी ई वाई और समबड़ी नो बड़ी जो ना बिलीव इट दिल से ओ समथिंग ऐसा मत बोलो यार एक्स ई वाई ऑल बेस्ट ब्रांड पीपल विल ऑलवेज क्वेश्चन सो देन वी सेट हु ऑडिट्स आई एम अहमदाबाद रिपोर्ट द रैंडम कंपनी विच आई हंड्रेड ऑफ द नेम राइट इज ब्रिक वर्कस Oh, I I didn't know. Achha. Yeah, so Brickworks is the auditor for Anand Nawab, and we're like, okay, let's get them. And they audited your whole. And they audited the full placement report. Use the same standard. It's called IPRS. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So and then and thereafter it worked out, and that's how the brand actually got built. So look, uh, uh, the content is that you put up is fantastic. Uh, even the kind of people that come in as of course giving you virality and and making sure that the brand spreads and so on and so forth. I also believe I may be wrong mm. uh, that with the in the education sector you need to get trust in the minds of the students okay. and 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 the uh, the parents who are actually paying in some cases yeah. out here uh, for the undergraduate or the postgraduate program. How do you build that trust? It's, look, it's, it's very easy in my business because with the learning outcome we also provide a degree with it, yeah. and degree comes with its inherent yeah. form of signalling and so on and so forth. But you have taken up the baton to go out and challenge this whole regulatory bodies and say, "Look, dude, I don't need a degree. 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 I don't need I only have 140 students. <laughs> That's 0.0001 percent. Right. Right. So I only need to convince those 140 or 140, 150 yeah. students that I have. Right. So when I look at TAN, the TAN is huge. Yeah. Like it, it's huge, right? But I just need one out of like 10,000 students to believe in what we are trying to do, and one out of 10,000 parents to just believe in what we are trying to do. That we are able to do. That we are able to do. So the thing is because our ticket size is huge my volume will never be large right in fact for my i mean even in my business plan my pg program my mba program will never be more than 300 students ever ever right so isp has reached what 500, 500 after 20 900 900? 900 oh wow but if you would ask isb's founders or if you would ask isb's dean they'll tell you that that was the biggest mistake they made okay right? so they had to keep it constrained they should have kept it to 400 500 talk to anybody in isb and i'm sure a lot of isb people are watching this <laughs> if isb was a 400 person 500 person which is much better than 900 right most ims stop at 400 yeah 480 maybe yeah. i think the biggest one um so we intend to not even go to 400 we tend to go to 300 that makes for a uh, you know a, a good enough revenue that we can serve our students really well bring the best faculty from harvard wharton stanford bring the best faculty from all these bain bcg mckinsey company to come and teach right um In undergrad, we don't intend to be more than 500 students ever. You've started your undergrad program. We, undergrad started. Classes are going on. It's our second week. Oh first wow! First batch. Um, And all of them will not get a degree. They will get a certification from Masters Union, which has now I think much more value than than. Yeah, yeah because the placements are good. Yeah, because, the placements uh, are good. Placements are good. Um, the average GMAT for my MBA students is more than 720. Oh wow! Year. Yeah, so this current. <laughs> uh, just to give you context, like what in my time was seven twenty four, seven twenty five. Yeah, I mean all good institutions only what seven hundred plus, seven ten plus. plus huh? Yeah, Indians are to thoda jada marks lagta hai. And then for my undergrad, uh, the kids are. Uh, I mean, you have to just come and see the kind of energy. But generally, like these are kids who are coming from a Shiv Nadar school or a Sri Ram school or a Pathways or a Lamart or a Vellum Boys. Or, so these are good schools where the students are coming from. Uh, everyone's above ninety, ninety-five percent. Oh, sab to hai. But um, and you've got a filter that you've gone out and put up. You you do yeah. a very strong interview. With the essays that you were doing in so the interview. So full four-step process. Again, they have to pay whatever three thousand, five thousand rupees for the application. Uh, that makes sure that they're serious. Then they have to write those essays, upload those videos, do an entrance test, uh, do an entrance test video, then come to campus, do an interview on campus, and then they have to do a scavenger hunt in Gurugram. Oh. And students actually vote on each other as to who they want to. Uh, you know, include get them into in the, the class. Yeah, yeah, it's very interesting. The way all of these things also actually help build trust and uh, brand. Amazing. And trust is equal to brand, by the way. Yeah. In no, today's world, I mean, that's the only thing education. that works. Yeah. And trust is equal to brand, but no, that thing. I think that's a that's a very good question. But is there anything you would have done differently uh, if you were, let's say, rewind? 
Look, uh, I come from a very different uh, fundamentals of thought in the education sector. Uh, we've got very small or less number of seats in the IITs and the IIMs of the world or even in the in the most premium of yeah. institutions like the likes of ISP or a master's union if I put it that way. Uh, about only 15% of very good students who have got strong foundations in their 10th and 12th are able to go out and crack some of these examinations. The other 85% are not able to clear some of these examinations and I believe not because of any fault of theirs. The schooling system is not good enough. The, they didn't have the right place, right time. Yeah, they were not there yeah. in tier 2, tier 3 cities. They didn't have the right set of faculties or teachers who could go out and... So, you think that the child wants to AIML, but the child has not studied good in 11 12th mein achche se statistics, he has not studied maths. Nahi padha hai. So, how will he go out and become really good in, in AIML? Now, the second thought process that I had was if we really need to bring the whole 5 trillion, 10 trillion dollar economy dream uh, 5 trillion by 2027 and so on and so mm. forth. We need to make sure that the per capita income increases from 2800 that we are at today to $10,000. That means every student should be able to earn that much more amount of money mm. by doing or knowing something that he has mm. learned five either five in five his five teachers and college. 5x करना पड़ेगा. Now, 5x के लिए उसको कुछ एक बेहतर चीज आना चाहिए जो वो industry में apply कर सके जिसके लिए ज़्यादा पैसा मिलता है. Now, life में बहुत ही simple है. अगर आप engineer हो, Full stack आता है आपको, आपको कम पैसा मिलेगा, आपको blockchain में, Ethereum में solidity coding आता है और आप dApps बना सकते हो, आपको ज़्यादा पैसा मिलेगा, because there's scarcity of those set of engineers. So our job, what we saw was to give opportunities to those 85% of those students. ये तो मैं समझ गया बिल्कुल, but anything you would have done differently, ये तो आपने किया? यार देखो, we like uh, you went out and actually sat on the thesis for quite some time. We we did every kind of business in edtech, made mistakes and learned from that. So, as I told you, I had a boot camp for 6 months. After 6 months, we partnered with universities and we started these executive programs as well. We also started doing B2C in the university space and these were like, when the product market fit doesn't come, until you go out and experiment in the in the market to understand what will happen, what will happen, what will happen, what will happen, how do you go out and put this value proposition out? Finally, we, we zeroed down to the fact that we have to study online plus offline, hai, right? So after a lot of mistakes, we started to online first because we came to VC and we thought that it will be a scale, we will study a lot of children. Learning outcome, 20%, 30%. The student who is really doing well in online learning, who is really motivated to be in the classroom and learn, is the student who studies. A student who is not motivated to be in the classroom and learn, is the student who studies. A student who is not motivated enough, kya hamara job hai unko motivate karna aur unko padhana hmm. is something that we thought is our job. Matlab hmm. bhoat saare bootcamp companies bolte yaar thik hai, wo motivated nahi tha, isliye usne padhai nahi ki. Hamne socha nahi yaar, wo motivated isliye nahi tha, kyunki uska dhyan nahi lag raha tha, kyunki uska foundation mein wo kuch concepts samaj nahi aare the aur ham log us concepts ko maan rahe the ki yaar is bache ko to aata hi hoga, kyunki har bache ko aata hai. But that's not that true. true. Right? So, we have made big mistakes. Karne ke baad, we went into an online plus offline. Right. We went into a formal institution and we took up the whole charge to get into so a regulated environment, if so I put it that so way. Essentially, <laughs> what you ended up doing, you would have done it much sooner. Yeah. That, that would be That's the, why. We would have made lesser you, mistakes. You mentioned you know, VCs. Like, did you end up raising? or did We you raised a that? small amount of money. Okay. Uh, and that too, during that period where EdTech had become a VC uh, industry rather than a PE industry for the pandemic. And then we soon realized that, look, the VCs are giving us goals that, may, that we do not want to achieve. Mm. The VCs were telling us, go scale to 40,000 students in like three years or four years. The incentives now, are not aligned. The incentives are not aligned. The goals are not aligned. Mm. The kind of learning outcome that we want to give out to the, to the students are not aligned. Mm. For example, a lot of them wanted us to get into mass market. Mm. Now, one of the biggest things that I believe is you, we need to give... So whatever your thesis was, they were basically not in agreement. We, were, we mm. were not in agreement. A lot of PE people were in agreement, but we were small for those. those. Mm. So, we, we took strategic so, investments so in education, and then we I mean, moved your, forward. Your advice would be don't fundraise. No, that's not what I'll suggest. My suggestion is very simple. This is a long drawn game. Either traditional education system or even ed tech, showing learning outcomes is very important and will take about a minimum of two to three years. That's when you can call that Mira so product market. If you can show more outcomes, then you can scale more. Yes, you absolutely. Show, uh, don't scale. Yeah. It all comes down to outcomes. Also, the second thing is a lot of models in this particular business are not made for scale at the way that a fintech scales or a healthcare, a health tech scales and so on and so forth. 
नाउ दैट्स एन अंडरस्टैंडिंग दैट मोस्ट फाउंडर्स नीड टू हैव एज क्विकली एज पॉसिबल जैसे ही पैंडमिक खत्म हुआ बहुत सारी टेस्ट प्रेप कंपनीज ने अपने सेंटर्स खोल लिए और सेंटर खोलने का जो स्केल होता है वो धीरे धीरे ही होता है यू हैव टू गो आउट एंड बिल्ड प्रॉफिटेबिलिटी एट ईच ऑफ दो सेंटर्स एंड मूव फॉरवर्ड आकाश शोट द वे लॉन्ग बैक राइट सो सम ऑफ दोज थीस वॉज रॉन्ग अकॉर्डिंग टू मी a lot of vcs then understood the market over the last 1 1 and, and a half years they and then they corrected themselves to go out and say ki aap dekho investment edtech mm-hmm. mein karna hai mm-hmm. so we have to find a founder who is ready to entrench himself into this business for a long run 5 se 7 saal minimum aapko learning outcome lagega and hence those vcs whose whose uh, goals are aligned to those 5 to 7 years is somebody who should go out and invest in and then, education like has the government been uh, been to your existence yet or has it been okay No, the, see, the government is quite okay. Mm. Now uh, we've reached a level of governance in this particular country where the governance is a policy or a direction mm. rather than regulations and rules. Even mm. if you see the national education policy, it's a bunch of loose directions that the government wants to show to the institutions mm. to go out and take forward, mm-hmm. right? Um, and we we saw the pre-pandemic world. we saw, saw the pandemic mm. world and we are now seeing the post pandemic world and we have thrived in each of those areas so government was okay there are a few funny regulations that are there mm. but i think that's there in most of the most of the industries that are and sooner or later most of those will go away we are mm. seeing uh, the government going out and opening up the regulations for the edtech partnering with institutions so that institutions life can be better the learning outcomes could be better and so on and so forth mm. that wasn't there uh, in a pre 2018 what do you think education being for profit versus not for profit i think education should be for profit mm. i'm i'm very clear on that but how uh, do you think we can achieve that look a like capitalistic india? i'll tell you how so a capitalistic um, country like ours we still have socialistic hangover and we should have no qualms in going out and saying that it's only over the last 20 years that we have become 100% capitalistic and and uh, started applying those thought process in in the industry now dekho yaar education because of this socialistic hangover had to be a charitable trust a section 8 company and so on aisa kaun sa industry hai duniya mein jo bina private ke paise pe पला बढ़ाए आगे बढ़ाए ऐसा कोई भी नहीं है इंडिया में तीन परसेंट या हाल ढाई परसेंट ऑफ द जीडीपी गवर्नमेंट स्पेंड करते हैं सेंट्रल गवर्नमेंट स्पेंड करते हैं ऑन एजुकेशन उससे डबल और ट्रिपल आप जैसे लोग अपना प्राइवेट पैसा लगाकर एजुकेशन को आगे बढ़ाते हैं राइट सो इन इंडिया इफ यू हैव अ लार्ज नंबर ऑफ यूनिवर्सिटीज इज मेनली बिकॉज ऑफ द प्राइवेट पीपल हु आर देर पुट इन देर ओन हार्ड अर्न मनी इन दिस पर्टिकुलर बिजनेस इट्स नॉट द गवर्नमेंट इज गॉन आउट एन हेल्प दम राइट सो we have to make it for profit we have to ensure that the pricing is as such so that you can go out and cater to each section of the society there'll be prim- premium institutions who will have premium fees there'll be educa- yeah. education institutions who will be mass market and so yeah. on and so forth so, and that's how that's how it should be and and tell me one thing it is you know we we talk about opening more colleges opening more uh, courses uh, reaching out to more people but like do you ever feel that the issue with education is is sure i mean it's about access and it's about skills but I, don't you feel it's even deeper than that like you know like the way we teach the way we put students in a classroom the way we say okay ye 6 mahine ka term hai uske end mein fir ye 80% apne final exam se aayega 20% continuous assessment se aayega final exam ke agle din sab koi bhul jayenge multiple choice ho raha hai bachcha ratta maar raha hai i mean you're spending so much time in a classroom in in, a, in our school is there roi to that learning or is that learning completely like just imitation of learning dekho yaar roi nahi hai tabhi to hamari jaisi company ka- kafi acha kar pa rahi hai mm-hmm. right and uh, you don't believe that we went out and removed examination from the the kind of mm-hmm. subjects that we uh, we teach even at the universities and we replaced it with a jury for the first 1 2 years board of studies hod director you know the whole whole fund everybody gave us a lot of friction saying that yaar exam hi kaise nahi ho sakta correct the yaar har subject mein ek project bana raha hai wo project bachcha ek corporate coach ko aur ek external faculty ko dikha raha hai wo corporate coach industry ka banda hai jo dekhkar usko internship ya life project dega is something that a large number of institutions were not able to digest right but they opened up what i really believe is look in india there are 1100 universities hain uh, about 51000 kuch stand alone institutions and colleges etc hain uh, the more the funding that the government gives to some of these aided uh, colleges and institutions will stop over the next set of 5 to 10 years only those institutions will survive that are really providing the learning outcome in this particular area yeah. learning outcome cannot be provided by 
जस्ट फॉलोइंग द सेम पैटर्न इन ईच सब्जेक्ट वी आर वेरी क्लियर ऑन दैट आप साइंसेस को भी वैसे ही पढ़ा रहे हो आप सोशल साइंसेस को भी वैसे ही पढ़ा रहे हो आप डिजिटल को भी वैसे ही पढ़ा रहे हो आप मैनेजमेंट को भी वैसे ही पढ़ा रहे हो ऐसा नहीं हो सकता है द सेकेंड पार्ट ऑफ दिस प्रॉब्लम इज दैट द फैकल्टीज इन इंडिया द फैकल्टी इन इंडिया और इट्स इट्स अ प्रोफेशन नॉट ऑफ चॉइस टिल टूडे इट्स इट्स बिकॉज फैकल्टी डोंट गेट द राइट सेट ऑफ पे पैकेजेस इन दिस पर्टिकुलर इंडस्ट्री uh they may not have the right set of learnings to go out and teach that particular subject and stuff and there's a scarcity of it now now is the time that people like you and i are coming into this market and we are paying faculty a huge amount of money i'm sure the the one of our biggest expenses in our balance in our pnl will be of that of faculty because we really believe in getting the best set of faculty into the classrooms who can then innovate some of those learning pedagogies so who says that your internal assessment has to be an examination of a multiple choice question just because you have a learning management system that supports multiple yeah, choice yeah that's the, that's that's how education yeah. institutions are run today mere paas mcq hai lms ke upar to main mcq bana ke dal dunga aasan hai right but you need the faculty yeah. that are well learned who can innovate who are well paid so that they are motivated to this to do this particular work and you need the institutions to compete with each other to start, we we need to stop giving them the government aids etc they need to start becoming a pnl stand alone yeah. pnl of their own if, and that's when doodh ka doodh aur pani ka pani samne ho jayega if you if you know let's say let's assume that uh, you sell your company right and you want to start up again in education what would you start up uh, what are the gaps that you see <laughs> where you feel like there is still a <laughs> चलो देर आर लॉट ऑफ गैप्स आप अगर हायर एजुकेशन की बात करोगे ना सो फ्रॉम द वे दैट कॉलेज डिस्कवरी हैपन्स टूडे आज के दिन में हम एक्चुअल में काउंसलिंग नहीं कर पाते और यू रिटर्न अ लार्ज नंबर ऑफ ब्लॉग्स ऑन जनरेटिव ए आई एंड सो ऑन एंड सो फोर्थ इन द पास सिक्स मंथ्स वी कैन यूज टेक्नोलॉजीज लाइक जेन ए आई टू गो आउट एंड डू पर्सनलाइज काउंसलिंग फॉर द स्टूडेंट सो दैट ही एक्चुअली चूज इज समथिंग जिसमें हम बोलते हैं ना एक ही गाय हो या समथिंग दैट ही इज रियली पैशनेट अबाउट एंड कैन अर्न ऑल्सो सो काउंसलिंग and the college discovery is still is still waiting to be disrupted and there are companies that are coming in who have, who have really thought about it in a very new new fashion another thing that i want to really relook at is the way that placements work in this country or the placements have been working with universities mm-hmm. and institutions etc mm-hmm. um thoda i mean the placements has to has to become obviously it has to become tech enabled digital and so on and so forth but we need the industry to be involved in the process of placement not on the on the very day that the interview is happening but 6 months or 1 year before mm. so there has to be a very strong integration between institution and the industry and if you ever made a placement the platform. company and your first client <laughs> अभी टाइम है अभी एक प्रॉब्लम को लिया है उस पर आगे बढ़ते हैं फिर देखते हैं बट आई एम श्योर प्लेसमेंट इज समथिंग एंड लास्टली बहुत सारी कंपनीज आजकल बहुत सारे फाउंडर्स ऐसा सोच रहे हैं कि मैं इंडिया से पॉपुलेशन के उठा के बाहर भेजूंगा मुझे ऐसा लगता है एंड दिस इज अ पर्सनल थॉट दैट अ लार्ज नंबर ऑफ स्टूडेंट्स फ्रॉम आउटसाइड इंडिया फ्रॉम द लाइक्स ऑफ साउथ ईस्ट एशिया अफ्रीका एक्सेट्रा विल कम इन टू इंडिया टू स्टडी राइट and there are not many companies who are going out and solving that particular yeah. problem so there there lies some of these very big opportunities in in the place oh, of absolutely college discovery the studying in india and placements because it needs to be relooked at or disrupted in the way that it's been working makes sense no no exciting um i agree with all those three i'll just add one more thing which is you know you mentioned there are 51000 colleges um uh, and i'm going to venture a number i'm not sure if it's true but of those 50000 probably 30000 colleges have probably more than 50% of the seats empty yeah maybe absolutely correct so the right number is about 43% of it is is empty okay 18000 of them are stand alone institutions in stand alone institutions 80% of the seats are empty right. they are on the verge of of shutting down right but there is still a huge demand for education right? and we still have um, plenty of students who don't get what they want so i mean my you know you know through this podcast what i want to just sort of get the word out is that hey please if you are looking to start up in education please start a college <laughs> generally but build the college with first principles with with these newer methods that we are talking about not don't be like you know prisoners of legacy but try to you know build for new skills build for new practices things that actually work um it's it's profitable it can grow it is scalable you know currently there are 26 universities in india who do revenues more than 1000 crores oh wow but the bitters i mean i'm, yeah. I'm going to venture probably 60 70 80% <laughs> yeah right? 
and and so it is a good business right right of course in india education has to be not for profit right but there are ways to uh, not get around it but to like for example what we have done in masters union is that we are essentially a tuition center okay and we tell the students hey listen our job is to give you a great education mm. and to give you a great placement none of these things require a degree yeah right so we give the option to our students that if you really want a degree by the way you don't need a degree for anything absolutely but if you really want a degree you can enroll in any delhi university or whatever school of open learning or or some course like that get that degree also going right right so you know if you really want to start in education i think this formula is something that's worked for us uh scalar academy has started the same thing called right. sst scalar school of technology physics wala has started the same thing physics <laughs> yeah, wala school of innovation mm-hmm. uh these are all essentially unbundled i i call it credential and bundling yeah so credential comes from a regulated institution if you want it right and the degree and the place uh, the education and the placement comes from one of these tuition centers you know um, that reminds me the the regulations and the government is also moving to facilitate some of those thought processes that you put out i'll be right? i'll be glad i mean so when the I government that, yeah. so nap has gone out and launched the abc which is the academic bank of credit yeah, it launched so, it's launched yeah. Yeah, yeah so the idea is that you have your to put all your credits onto a particular it uh, is the bank. biggest first thing is that you have to be not for profit yeah i mean of course <laughs> that's a look those are different set of topics Probably. but the idea is to make sure that a student is able to earn credits from wherever that he thinks is yes. the right way to the go out and earn credit i want more entrepreneurs to get into education right and traditional education and just till the time it's not for profit i mean you you won't you you will not do a college because it's no not. i will see i'll not do a college today uh-huh. is mainly because it has large amount of infrastructure work which i am not adept you know, at you know that's actually not true mujhe so zameen karna padta hai building banana padta hai lab banana padta hai actually it depends so education is a state subject right every state has its yeah. own laws right so for yeah. example in punjab there's a 25 acre minimum requirement right but in bombay it's 25000 square feet yeah uh, bombay mein vertical space is something that you go out and require and that's also recently but gone out and rented yeah you can rent it you can rent it right so it, it's very interesting you have to look at the state bangalore is super easy yeah karnataka is hard so some cities also have made it easy <laughs> the, the state itself is hard um but uh, you know I, i really hope that one day we can have for profit so um tell me this in masters union you're creating a large number of entrepreneurs as well mm-hmm. and uh, i believe entrepreneurs re- require some amount of exposure in a particular set of industry regulation and so on and so forth they also require a certain amount of what do you call it hutspa to go out and actually start a company have that have that yeah. gravitas as yeah. well as have that seriousness about a particular situation about a particular mm-hmm. problem and go out and solve it how do you go out and teach that to the students it's very easy so it's it's the first line on our website it says learn business by doing business okay so in term 1 you mentioned it better than i could you have to build a e-commerce business right like a simple drop shipping e-commerce business that requires zero investment hmm. right as soon as students start that which is part of the curriculum chutzpa no chutzpa you have to do it it's a grade mil na aapko ha karna hi padega karna hi padega aapko this is part of the but as soon as they see that first you know money come into their paytm accounts from a customer who paid them not for their time for a change but for a product that they have sold the dna changes there there's a genuine mutation that happens in term 1 at masters union where these kids who come from these consulting firms or these banks or these you know as software developers they come they do drop shipping in term 2 they are a different breed of people wow suddenly you have unlocked their on like if you poked the bear you have unlocked their entrepreneurial dna and once you taste it you can once you taste the blood you cannot go back तो एक बार आप उनको एक्सपीरियंस करवा दोगे पैसे वैसे कमाओ कैसे कमाना है so अपना धंधा धंधा बनाना है अपना बन गया ना यार उनको लगता है कि यार मेरा बॉस ही धंधा बना सकता है उन्होंने बनाया एवरेज लास्ट ईयर 40 कंपनीज वर देयर टुगेदर दे मेड 2 करोड्स ऑफ रेवेन्यू सो पर कंपनी लेट्स से दे डिड 5 लाख ऑफ रेवेन्यू एंड व्हाट डू यू डू दे दे टेक इट होम दे इन्वेस्टेड बैक इनटू द बिजनेस नो दे इन्होंने पार्टी करते हैं जो करते हैं मुझे नहीं पता 2 करोड्स रेवेन्यू प्रॉफिट वुड बी लेस दैट्स ओके even if per student they are making 1 lakh rupees yeah yeah so that's a big bad. thing in so bad. first first they just they just come to the mba program term 1 abi they become different people altogether and then i have to do nothing they become entrepreneurial themselves a lot of them are not able to fundraise by the end of the program okay but they have an entrepreneurial dna they have project they have zero to one journeys they can show they become great chief of staffs they be, they become great founders of his role they become great entrepreneurs in residence they become great uh sales folks they become great product managers product banana so just today i was meeting a student his name is tejas um 
and he built a company called uh, Samarpana. Samarpana is basically a platform where very easily a temple can fundraise money. Okay, a and temple can fundraise money. Yeah, so it's okay. a, uh, it's a, uh, uh, Patreon for temples. Think of okay. it like that, right? Right. So as a, if now if I want, so Indian temples raise forty billion dollars a year in cash. Oh wow. Forty I'm billion. I'm sure Tirupati and so on and so forth are like two hundred billion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All Indian temples combined, all religious institutions, temples, churches, and and masjid, forty billion dollars is raised by Indian religious institutions every year in cash. Wow. None of it happens digitally. Zero <laughs> percent happens digitally. Imagine this. So Samarpana, you and I can download the app. We can go to the app. We can say today I want to donate ten thousand rupees to thirty Krishna temples. And will automatically, and automatically it. distribute. We'll, give, we'll generate an ATG for you. You can submit the ATG, get your benefit. Wow. ATG is the tax. And benefit. all of this has been thought by the student. So the student now they could not fundraise for this because there were some issues with, um, um, I think, I mean the, the TAM was not an issue, yeah. but you know I think they're young. They're transactional costs and taxes. Huh, that hmm. um, but at the end of the day, like I mean, he's just decided not to continue with the company, but he's built a crazy app. He has a great story to tell. Any founder would be very lucky to have him as his chief of staff. And the experience that he brings about actually discovering all the temples and the processes, etc. Process, yeah, he's hustled, right? And he has hustled story to prove. I'll pitch him to you. Like, would you want to interview him tomorrow? For sure. For sure. Why not? Easy. So, of course. I mean, we need people like those who have actually done a company, something. built something, know the challenges, and then I mean, he'd be better be able to empathize with me and then solve yeah, my problems can wear for the me. the founders hat. Wow. So. You know, uh, that's also something that we've been good at. Um, you know, and, and this has led to the brand development. This has also led to uh, like good placements. So tell me one. Uh, tell me one more thing. So look, uh, there's a the job of an institution is to teach and make sure that the students become good professionals and so on and so forth. But there's another aspect of a education institution, especially a university, which is to go out and do research mm. to make sure the number of patents in the country yeah. are increasing. Yeah. People push people into research, into newer areas that can be applied in the industry. There are some crazy examples of a, of a IIT Madras uh, professor who's, who's been training yeah. and mentoring students in the space of AIML and owns percentage in about 30 companies. Yeah. A lot of them have become like really big. Yeah. But you don't see those examples or those stories coming out from a large number of institutions and universities. So where is that gap? Is that is that not a focus for the education institutions? Because 80% of the patents in India are filed by foreign companies using the engineers of uh, yeah, India. I think the incentives are completely misaligned. Okay. See, uh, I run an education institution, right? And I want to gear for all the rankings. Right. Uh, FT ranking, NIRF ranking, NAC accreditation, all of that, right? And they all tell you, yeah, you have to uh, go and do well in research. Now, doing well in research means getting a high H index. Right. Right. H index means how many Reference. people actually uh, cite your paper, yeah. right? Uh, and there's a certain mathematics that happens. Hmm. Now, my research doesn't have to be the most useful. To there be, should not be an industry application to be it, but refer to it. Refer to it. What do you refer to it? I have a paper. You are my friend. Refer to it. My department is my department. I have 300 professors. I have told you that I have a dean. I have a dean. I have a dean. So there is that game happening where people are just citing each other. The paper itself has no value. There are thousands of journals that have come up where you can just go and publish openly, but there is no peer reviewing happening, technically speaking. And even if there is peer reviewing happening, it's you scratch my back, I scratch your back. That's the reality of research, not just in India, but also at Harvard, Wharton, Stanford, Yale, Stern, Sloan, NCI, LPS, Northwestern, Chicago. Same thing is happening. I'm sorry. I mean, this is the truth. When did you last hear that a great idea came out from an HBS research paper? Case studies are not, different. Not really. Right. When did you last hear about something great coming out of a, uh, I don't know, IIT computer science department. The last that I remember was IIT Madras working something out in AIML. I, That's I, it. I, I Very about, focused. I about, this, I about the same exact <laughs> thing. IIT Madras, something yeah. happened in IIT yeah. Madras. Yeah, IIT Madras, AIML. That's the only thing that yeah, we all you know, know about. Many, how many patents IIT Delhi files every year? I don't know. I'm, I'm it's more than 600. Okay. Right? Can you name me any one of them? No. 
600 over the last 20 years. That I, means... I, I remember the COVID testing one. That's that's about it. Okay, sure. <laughs> 12,000 patents in the last 20 years. I'm just wow. extrapolating. Hmm. Can we name one of them? And none of them being used in the industry? Nothing. I mean, not that I know of. And I'm in the industry. And I would have known a little bit. Yeah. If not, right? And the same is true with the research that I'm also doing at Master's Union, to be very honest. We have faculty. They're doing research. And I keep telling them, listen, you're writing this paper. Who is going, going to, to help? Yeah. No, first of all, who's going to read? Yes. Yeah. Right, the journal that you're publishing in, that journal costs $2,000 per month to just subscribe to. But who journal today? Who doesn't read the journal? What you're reading is only for you to feel good about yourself and to inflate your ego. Technically, this researcher is not going to help anybody. Right? Some, uh, you know, the nuances of how color palettes change. Uh, no, one's, no one cares. Write it. And also the way you write it, the language. But but it's the first principle to think about it. So kaise? how do you go out and increase research I, I think, within an organization? I, I think there should be two different organizations. There should be a okay. research organization and okay. there should be a teaching organization. When you try to marry the two, for example, at Wharton, right, or at Penn, I had great professors who were really bad researchers. And I had really lousy professors who were great researchers. Right? You have to differentiate the two. Teachers should teach, researchers should do research. When researchers end up teaching, they don't make for great teachers. I'm sure. Right? Also, they become very narrow-minded about their research. Niche. Niche. Yeah. Yeah. You know? And a student needs breadth. Yeah. Under that first year student in accounting. Usko to generalist banda. Yaar usko abhi PNL sikha do yaar kya hai. Matlab some gap rules changed in 1984 and how that changed the industry. That doesn't matter. That doesn't matter, doesn't matter to him yeah. right now. Right? And that doesn't matter to most people. Yeah. Right? So I think I think research is overvalued in terms of its parameter weightage in rankings. Unless that is fixed, we'll be in this rut. Right, of, of using research as a way to... I think also the fact because it has to be two different organizations per se, a large number of universities, institutions don't want to invest uh, basically just to go out and do research because it's got revenue or outcome, ROI, which is 5 years, 7 years, 10 years, it will come or not come, I don't know. Universities, universities only encourage research, so that means the ranking is oh, That's the real truth of that's it. That's the real truth. It's not to actually benefit the world in any way. I run a college, I'm telling you this. <laughs> this is the reality. <laughs> All right. So, uh, that's that's conversation about Masters Union and, and Imagine XP. Yeah. Now, uh, tell me, how is it being a... I'll, I'll move towards the entrepreneurship of it. Yeah. Uh, what's your day in a life of Pratham Mittal? You, I, so, what I'm curious about is, do you teach? I teach one course a year, but that's only 20 hours. In the whole year, 20 whole hours. Year, yeah. Okay. Uh, the second thing is, how many times do you that you address your faculties and uh, faculty and the kind of people that are teaching to we those students? We have a monthly town hall, okay, where we meet the entire team of Masters Union and we reiterate our vision, which mm. is to be a global top ten business school, right? So we reiterate that, um, you know, we do some R and R, we do some meet. so every month we I meet the entire team together. Okay. Then we have this thing called the cabinet meeting, oh, where all of my nine team leads who are me minus one, right? We meet together sometimes formally, sometimes casually. And we just give each other feedback, talk about our priorities, how we can help each other, you know, brainstorm ideas for the next. Uh, we have a quarterly board meeting. Uh, the board meeting minutes are shared with everybody. This uh, We had one today, actually. Right. Uh, and we actually record it uh, and we send it to everybody just so that they know exactly what the decision making is, the team. Um, and then we have a monthly uh, term-wise student town hall. Right. Three town halls, one for student experience, which is their issues like hostel in a year or so. Then a placement town hall, which is their pre preparedness for uh, placements and the academic town hall. So there are these set of meetings that happen every month, every two months. And uh, these things always help us bring everybody together on the same page. College is going to look Like you meet your dean once yeah. in the beginning. Yeah. And then gra graduation ceremony. <laughs> in the middle you never <laughs> meet, right? So you might be going in this direction, the dean is going in this direction. We come together much like a company. Right, like company town halls happen. You know, so. Yeah. So we do a lot of a lot of that, but the day is just work, work, work. And industry interface, I'm sure you'll be doing a large amount of industry interface. Yeah. Right? So I mean, a lot of it is sales. I mean, a lot of the job of any uh, education entrepreneur is selling his students right. or her students to corporates. Yeah. So I think I spend maybe half my time in Bangalore. A lot of the recruitments happen in Bangalore. Yeah. So I go there and meet with companies and sell. Now we have a team, but uh, I mean, I think some key accounts I still manage myself. And, and uh, the second 
the second question about being a founder is that look uh, again you have this background of running a very large or the family running a very large university you've broken all of those things uh, all of those principles thought process regulation etc and went out and started masters union what was the feedback that you got or what was the first two or three things that your parents or your brother or, yeah. or somebody went out yeah. and told you saying that yaar ye to karna hi aur ye cheez nahi karna hai ekdam i think uh, you know my my parents had great lessons while building lpu yeah and i genuinely feel that masters union is lpu 2.0 oh wow okay like version 2 of lpu so all the mistakes that they had made building lpu from scratch you know i could learn from those mistakes and just take care of those mistakes from the beginning itself in our design choices so i think a few design choices that you know we've learned from lpu's experiences to stay clear of regulation yeah to be asset light yeah something that we've learned from them is to over index on placements okay is to over index on you know great faculty uh, so i think some learning here and there but um, but i think they're generally proud of of the kind of I'm brand sure. that we've been able to build i'm sure masters uh, union it just been 3 3 and a half years of existence years, yeah. Yeah. and and one of the best set of brand in the management space now yeah, yeah. in the country I mean, most spoken about i'm sure most spoken about <laughs> and most polarizing yeah so i, I think mean, the, the the current uh, you know students of other iims i think they like to <laughs> you know um, So that's good no which that's is good great, yeah they think you're a competition yeah, yeah. <laughs> as i said if if in 2 years you're considering me your competition i'm happy right right <laughs> if uh, there's this uh, this is i am abc group on instagram and they right. keep like you know posting some slight remarks on us and i'm like good like <laughs> you're giving me attention like that's that's all right okay uh, uh, one another fun question for you that i had was uh, if you had to get about two founders from india or internationally two founders internationally two founders from india who you'd love for them to teach at the campus to the students who those those four people would be it's a good question i mean <laughs> and i would say i would say like i would love it if like elon musk could come and like you know but the um so i think my one of my most interesting meetings that happened with any founder was with Ronnie Skruwal right uh he you know of course today runs upgrad but back in the day he ran utv yeah right so he's a hardcore bollywood on today yeah yeah <laughs> um and so he's done bollywood he's done edtech he's done venture capital um and every time i meet him like he's just brimming with a lot of energy at i believe 65 66 years of yeah. age right He was one of the first content entrepreneurs where people didn't understand what content, what content was, was, man. He sold UTV <laughs> to Disney. Yeah, for billion of dollars, man. Yeah, yeah. It was like one of the first set of unicorn yeah, in the country exactly. that nobody then then remembers today. Yeah, But, so, so, I think a great story. Yeah. Um, he's also a great example of how to build a company. So he's whatever 60. Yeah. His co-founders are 30, yeah. 32, 33, yeah. right? Like, and that's and he's able to match the energy between yeah, them. That's yeah, crazy. I think he's even more energetic. Than, uh, <laughs> man, I'm sorry, man. But like, it's true. Like, I mean. <laughs> it's it's a different level of inspiration that evening so i think he would be definitely one person that i would love to learn from i mean and then of course by word shifted my students um and another one i think is um uh you know someone who has a really good eye for mass market india is aman right like of boat of boat yeah uh he really knows what people at the bottom of the pyramid middle of the pyramid are looking for looking for care or for feel or emote about emote about <laughs> i think like i don't have that like i think i don't i'm not able to relate with india with bharat i think he's able to and, and i think that comes in very handy because the biggest skill as an entrepreneur that you can have is empathy for your customer yeah, absolutely so i have noticed in him the kind of decisions he's taken the kind of like people he uses as his brand ambassadors it's always it's always contrarian So Pratham one last question before we move on to some of the rapid fire that record the record club show has set up for us sure. uh, basically how do you see or what do you where do you see masters union 10 years from now I'll, what is it that you're building I'll talk about 5 years yeah. in 5 years we intend to be a global top 10 business school that's it that's the goal that you're running that's after the, yeah that's the clear goal and interestingly research is only 10% of that criteria <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> no true. no it, it, by choice if you want to become a teaching school that's yeah. fantastic so about you want to be a teaching school that's yeah. a top 10 and, right. Uh, right now the top 10 are the ones that i mentioned before harvard yeah. wharton stanford yeah. 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 so, so i think that's the clear goal <laughs> amazing uh, what about for you 
So uh, look, I have a very noble intention there. Uh, teach about 25,000 to 30,000 students in the whole new university model that we've gone out and built up and make sure that we are able to affect those 25,000 to 30,000 students with the right set of placements in the different niche areas and so on awesome. is, is what we are looking at. So if we are able to get about 200 of these universities that we are partnering with in the top 500 ranking, then we have done our job over the next five to 10 years is how, how I look at it. Makes sense. Makes, uh, uh, sounds much more noble than mine. <laughs> mine no. is more on... Uh, <laughs> so, this is this is after selling two organizations. Uh, when you've done done your bit of yeah, of earning money, then you're like, अच्छा आप कहीं तो है जहाँ पे पैसा बहा के गवाय है यार. You know, I think so, I think like for me, it's also about India, right? Like I feel really bad that no Indian institution is in the top 250. It is not. Right? And it, that's that's what should and drive it's not us. That difficult. Like it's it is it is hard, but it's not impossible. We feel like it's impossible for Indian college कैसे आएगा top 100, top 10. देखो यार it's a path. Five to seven years journey. Like you rightly said, five years in top ten, I will reach. It's a five to seven year journey. People should have the intention for it. And there are a few promising ones that are going out and showing. There are there are entrepreneurs like you. There are a few that I know. Abhishek Mohan Gupta of Jagran Lake City University, building a fantastic university. The KR Mangla, me, they are the, both the brothers yeah. are building a fantastic university. Of course, LPU has shown the way. NAC A plus plus now and so on and yeah, so you, forth. You've so, been <laughs> I, 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 yeah, I've been I've been partnered with LPU for quite some time now, for two years. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> okay, I, I run the user experience campus. program. Okay, I, have, okay, I don't know that. I don't so know that. yeah, I think many intro kar raha tha. Ah, of course. <laughs> <laughs> okay, got it, got it. Okay, all right, all right, done. So rapid fire. All right, you start. So favorite book. Um, nudge. Okay. Uh, dinner with any business leader, living or dead. Um, Radhan Tata. Oh wow, amazing. Uh, favorite founder you've already spoken about, but anyone other than Ronnie Screwwala? Elon Musk. <laughs> <laughs> favorite favorite brand or actually uh, not for Tesla or SpaceX or PayPal, but for a school that he started. Yeah, so he's he's running his own school and he does not school. believe in the formal education system. Exactly. So that's what I would talk to him about, not <laughs> Tesla or SpaceX. Yeah. So for people that don't know, uh, Elon Musk runs a, a school within the SpaceX and the Tesla, uh, the the whole uh, factory that he's set up. And they don't have a curriculum. Not a curriculum. Uh, yeah. The teachers don't prescribe to a particular format of studying and they don't have examinations. Yeah, and yet so the students that are coming out. Projects and traveling around California. Yeah, absolutely. Beautiful. All right. So, favorite brand or company? Nike. Ah, oh, wow. We are on the same page. And now I think it's uh, the, the Japanese original Nike, the Onisuka. Yeah. Oh, oh. Tiger, yeah. Tiger. Uh, one piece of advice for someone who wants to build in edtech. Build a college, physical college, <laughs> don't do it tech. And if not an entrepreneur, what profession will you be in? I'd be a swimmer. You'll be a swimmer? Swimmer, swimmer. Yeah, oh, I, wow. I used to compete professionally in swimming and I think I could have gone all the way. <laughs> all right, so yeah. that. All right, your turn. Yeah. It's the same questions? No yeah, different I, questions. I think so. Oh, but then you got extra time. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Favorite book? Uh, it's India after Gandhi. Oh, uh, Ramchandra Gupta. Yeah. Oh, wow, that's a thick one. <laughs> Um, interesting. What was your best learning from that? Uh, well, as to how India, India's mentality moved from the 60s and 70s to the 90s and the new mentality of the millennials that has come in the 2010s and the 20s. The, the kind this of, is the latest edition. This is the latest new edition. One. The Not new the, one. The, huh. It has a preface and so on and so forth. But yet the kind of things that India went through, how state got created based on linguistic characteristics, how did different political parties come about and what are their intentions of going out and change, bringing It's not just a history change. book, it's, it's more a social, it's a, logical... It's a social, economic, historical okay. book. Okay. And that's the most interesting part you of it. Because, of where yeah, you're from, absolutely. actually, as an Indian. And why do some people take decision based on what particular decision and how is it uh, tied yeah. up in history? Exactly. Is something that you understand from that book. Yeah. It's a big fat book, but yeah. the chapter about Pawar's and... Uh, I live in Pune. I'm uh, not going to speak sorry, about this. Okay. This has to be cut, but okay. <laughs> dinner, dinner with any business leader? Um, you've already chosen Ratan Tata. Um, I choose Mukesh Ambani. Yeah, makes makes a lot of sense. <laughs> and he'll pay for it also. So. <laughs> and hopefully a lot of other things after <laughs> dinner then. <laughs> Favorite uh, founder? Favorite, Favorite founder? founder. Uh, so Steve Jobs have been a, has been favorite, uh, but look, uh, Tim Cook after Steve Jobs is is one of my most favorite executives. He's, he was not a founder, 
but he carried that legacy of Steve Jobs fairly well. And then he took up over the company when it was what, 250 billion, 350 billion, and it's like now like three trillion, three trillion. six yeah. times, yeah. seven times. So Indian that's economy great. almost. Yeah. <laughs> Almost yeah, yeah. Always it is. It is two point eight, yeah. two point eight matching. Yeah. yeah. Favorite uh, brand. Favorite brand is Air Jordan. I'm a big supporter of of. I believe Michael Jordan is one of the best athletes in the world. Uh, people don't know about him that he missed three thousand shots. Yeah. Um, uh, I mean, he's he's lost about two hundred fifty plus. That movie games. is a good one. Huh? Yeah. The movie is a good I one. I, I saw uh, it it's not about Jordan, but yeah. it's about the Air Jordans Air and Jordans. the shoes, etc. But but if you really look at Michael Jordan, then he he. But also the documentary is quite nice. The documentary is quite. Well, nice. Last Dance. Yeah, yeah. yeah, that was a good one. And some of his speeches are quite incredible. Yeah. So that's why Air Jordan, particularly of Nike. Do you Nike's like him more so. as a basketball player or as a as baseball a, player? As uh, as a basketball player, <laughs> I mean, uh, but a more more as a tricky question. Yeah, more as a person, and now as a golf player, of course. Yeah. One piece of advice for someone building in. Education. Uh, it's a long drawn game. Uh, be entrenched into this business. Don't come in for a two year or a three year outcome. That's and, not what. And what, what you'll uh, would you be if you were not an entrepreneur? Uh, I'd be an executive running somebody else's organization and building the PNL for them. <laughs> <laughs> That's the only thing that Straight I know. Forward, yeah, no, makes sense. Not a basketball player. No? Yeah, not a basketball player. <laughs> but great talking Pratham, to you. Pratham, thank you so much. I don't have a hamper to give you. Like that. Don't worry. No, no. Uh, but lovely conversation. And thank okay. you so much for I going guess. into the, the in details. Just let a man breathe and just hush so my mind could just see so my mind on a rock. At times I feel I can't get enough, but I sip a double cup and I spin a couple drugs.